Now to understand what um, the histopathology of Navium, uh, you should, let's review some histology of normal arteries and normal veins. So an artery has three, and veins too, have three layers. And the, these pictures are actually pictures of the peripheral arteries. So the, the intracranial arteries actually are slightly different, but it's close enough. You have your intima, which is uh, made of endothelial cells. You have an internal elastic lamina layer, the media, which has smooth muscle cells, and the adventitia, which has fibroblasts, nerve cells, vasosorum, et cetera. In a vein, veins are pretty similar, uh, except the smooth muscle cell layer is thinner, and you don't have the internal elastic lamina. Uh, and just as a side note, the external elastic uh, lamina is only present extracranially, so the intracranial vessels don't have that. So these are just a couple of H and E stains of an artery here in a vein. Now in an AVM, uh, in fact, even though we're talking about feeding arteries and draining veins and dilated vessels that are really quite large, um, larger than any other, could they could be larger than any other intracranial vessels, yet the architecture is basically the same thing as a capillary. There's an endothelial cell layer and nothing else. There's no smooth muscle cell layer. And it, despite the fact that the size of these vessels can be quite large, and by large, I mean they can be as large as you know several millimeters. So these are really huge vessels. Uh, other things that differentiate AVM vessels from normal arteries and veins are inflammatory cells. So in areas of microhemorrhages, and many AVMs do have areas of microhemorrhages, this is not the same thing as a ruptured AVM. They just do have small pockets of bleeding within the AVM, even in an unruptured AVM. But there are lymphocytes that gather around these areas. And also within the lumen uh, of the uh, AVM vessels themselves, you can see many neutrophils that would basically uh, adhere to the luminal surface of the AVM vessels. So that's the histopathology. Now, what do we know about the pathogenesis uh, of AVMs? First of all, AVMs are thought to occur, thought to be congenital. So you're born with them for the most part. The, uh, they are found um, in children, in babies even. There are genetic disorders that are associated with AVMs, um, one of which is a her hereditary hemorrhagic uh, telangiectasia or Osler-Weber-Randu syndrome. This is a rare autosomal dominant disorder where Vascular abnormalities can occur in the skin, the mucous membrane, the liver, the lungs, and the brain. Uh, patients with HHT uh, or the hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia can have multiple AVMs. In fact, they can develop AVMs uh, after birth. So there are cases, uh, case reports of patients with HHT who would get angiograms with, you know, so many AVMs, and you get it um, a year or two later, and they they develop new ones. This is not typical of um, most AVMs. Most AVMs are sporadic and therefore genetic counseling is not necessary. They are usually um, solitary. Most people do not have multiple AVMs. You really just have that one. And more very recently, really only in the last couple of years uh, with the advances in gene genetics, it's found that it's been found that somatic mutations are responsible, or at least are found in a majority of AVMs, uh, particularly somatic mutations in CRAS. And CRAS mutations induce the MAP kinase, um, ERK signaling pathway in the brain endothelial cells, which eventually lead to angiogenesis and migration of the endothelial cells. And this, was, this is thought to contribute to the pathogenesis of AVMs. But there's still a lot of unknowns about how AVMs form and why they form. So let's move on to epidemiology. The average age at presentation for AVM is 34. And this has to do with the fact that they are largely congenital and therefore the age of presentation is going to be younger than say something else like diabetes, for example. Um, Roughly equal male, uh, female predominance, just slightly more male. And importantly, the presentation, half the patients with AVMs present with hemorrhage and a quarter present with seizures 
and the rest are found incidentally. The important thing about this is that the outcome after hemorrhage is quite poor with a 10% mortality and 40% uh, poor outcome one month after hemorrhage. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you liked that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.